Hi guys, this week we're going to be continuing with um, reading informational articles. Um, this week you're going to be reading different um, informational texts about mysteries that have never been solved. Um, and when we do that, we're going to be making inferences, which is something we have talked about a lot, but I wanted to go over with you guys again. So how do you make an inference? You put together what you're seeing or what you're being told. So for us, that's what you're reading in the text. And then what you already know about something. You put those two together and you make an inference. So for example, let's say I see someone walking down the street. They are holding balloons and a gift. So what am I seeing? I'm, I see someone with balloons and a gift. What do I already know because of, you know, my experiences or what, you know, just what I know? People bring balloons and gifts to parties. And so an inference I can make is that that person is going to a birthday party or really any party. Um, so you make inferences all of the time without really even realizing it. So when you see things, when you read things, when you hear things, usually you make inferences. Um, this is an inference equation. So what I read, you use quotes from the text um, and note the page number. So we're going to be quoting today. Um, plus what I know, you use your background knowledge and your prior experiences from your own life. Then that equals what you infer. So you put two and two together and you make a conclusion about the story or the article or whatever you're reading. All right, we're going to watch this video about making inferences. Let's see something. Maybe it won't let me. Let's see. All right, you guys, pull over. That's the bank's money right there. I caught you red-handed. You're going to spend a long time behind bars. Cut! They're not going to jail. That's not in the script. Are you serious? Check it out. First, you leap onto their car and yell, All right, you guys, pull over. And then you say, That's the bank's money right there. Then... I caught you red-handed. Then nothing. See, there is no line about spending time behind bars. I guess I made an inference. I mean, look. The alarm is going off at the bank. They're running from the police. And they have bags of cash from the bank in the car. I made an inference that they were going to jail because of what they did. You made an inference? What on earth are you talking about? Well, I read the text. I thought about what I know. And so I made an inference. Oh, now I get it. Of course. In real life, they'd have to be arrested and charged. And there'd be a trial and lawyers. And before we knew for sure, they were going to jail. Hmm. What if I say, you guys are going to need a good lawyer? Yes, that works for me. All right, everyone. We'll do it again. Okay, so in that video... um. He was making an inference. Oopsies. I can't find my. He was making an inference about the script, and he was like, well, you know, he was robbing, and so he just assumed or made an inference, I guess, that um, the person would be going to jail, but that's not what the script said. Um, okay, so today I am going to show you how to do your activity that you're going to do for the rest of the week. Um, this is the graphic organizer you're going to be using. So clues, that's evidence from the text, plus your background knowledge, and then you make an inference. So I'm going to read this to you, and then I'm not going to do the graphic organizer now, but I will upload it to show you how I filled it out after reading this article. So what happened to the Mary Celeste? On December 4th, 1872, History's most famous ghost ship was found floating in the Atlantic Ocean. To the crew of the British ship De Gratia, which discovered the Mary Celeste east of the Azore Islands, the ghost ship presented a mystery. That mystery has endured to our own time. The ship's lifeboat was gone. Its navigation charts were thrown about the cabin. 
However, its cargo was almost completely undisturbed. More than three feet of water filled the bottom of the ship, and one of its two pumps was not working. A six-month supply of food and water was or food and water lay in the storage area, so food and water wasn't a problem. Yet, there was not a person aboard the Mary Celeste. What happened to the ten people who had set sail from New York almost four weeks earlier? Where were the seven experienced sailors, Captain Benjamin Briggs and his wife and two-year-old daughter? Some believe the ship was cursed and UFOs or sea monsters were involved. How would historians go about trying to solve the 150-year-old mystery? The case of the Mary Celeste is an example of how researchers try to unravel a historical mystery using the scientific method. To find out what happened in this famous, to this famous ghost ship, researchers first eliminated what could not have happened. Because the ship's cargo was not stolen, they eliminated attack by pirates. Another theory, mutiny by the crew, was rejected after interviewing descendants of the crew. Another possible explanation involved the barrels of alcohol the ship was carrying. Some thought the barrels could not have overheat, could have overheated and exploded. However, no damage was found. After rejecting unlikely theories, researchers asked, what would make a captain order his crew to abandon ship? They knew the ship was not in danger of sinking because sailors from the De Gratia were able to sail at 800 miles to land. The key to the mystery may be in the ship's log. When, re when researchers studied notes made by the now lost book, they learned some key facts. It appears the ship was at least 100 miles off course and in rough seas. The log shows that the Mary Celeste made a sudden northward turn. Researchers suspect Catherine Briggs, or Captain Briggs, was looking for safe, a safe harbor. The final piece of the puzzle, according to one historian, is the pump that was not working. Pumps are used to remove seawater that leaks into the bottom of a ship. Records show that on an earlier voyage, the Mary Celeste had carried a load of coal. Heavy dust from the coal may have clogged the pump. Because the hold or storage area of the ship was full of cargo, Captain Briggs may not have known how much water had leaked in. He may have overestimated the danger the ship was in and given the order to abandon ship. We probably will never know exactly what happened in 1872. However, the case shows how researchers tried to solve mysteries from long ago. And then I'm going to read the Did You Know? Before writing the Sherlock Holmes series, Arthur Conan Doyle wrote a short story about the mystery of the Mary Celeste. He mixed fact with fiction to create one of the most famous legends of the sea. Okay, so I'm going to um, upload a um, this completed graphic organizer, which again is what your guys you guys are going to do today. Um, only I'm going to use what happened to the Mary Celeste. You will be using a different article today.